with you, big hairy minge. I'm not going to like and subscribe to your stupid channel. How do you like that? Hello everyone, welcome back to the Miniature Dork Universe where all of your geeky hobby time dreams are realized. <laughs> okay, I know that's bullshit. But anyway, welcome back, despite my overinflated introduction. Today's topic is going to be on the topic of paint chipping. Paint chipping has become almost like a, a standard, you know, given that you're going to put it on your tank. When you see a lot of tutorials and what have you, there's always that step and people are using like ripped up sponges and little brushes and la la la. And to be honest, it looks great. It looks beautiful. And so my story begins way back a couple years ago when I posted pictures of this on a forum that I'm a member of. Uh, you know, and I got a lot of, uh, a lot of positive feedback about it. Uh, and I thought it turned out pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. But then, <clears throat> you know, someone piped up and said, oh, it looks great, except I wish you wouldn't put chipping all over it. Everybody puts chipping all over everything. And, uh, <laughs> you know, in the moment I kindly thought, well, you know, you know, you can fucking eat it. That's how I do it. And I have a pretty thick skin. Obviously, when you put yourself out there on the web, inevitably there's someone out there that doesn't like it or, you know, oh, you're stupid or whatever. So, you know, you can deal with it. But I thought, yeah, you know, fuck that guy. Um, just another one of those, those guys that has to pipe up about something. And, uh, you know, I kind of dismissed it. But then... You know, days passed and I was still thinking about that, you know. Why do I keep thinking about that uh, comment? And, uh, you know, I started to search my brain <laughs> and the little voice in my head. Why does it, why does bug, it bug me so, me so much, much that he, that said, he that? said that? Jeez, Jeez I, I, shouldn't I shouldn't care, care. Should, I? should I? I just don't know. Because, Davies, you know he's probably right. Ah, uh, uh, shit. shit. You're right, You're right. That's, that's probably, probably it. it. He's probably right. So that sent me on a quest. And luckily, that quest and investigation was very easy to conduct. And without further ado, I'm going to uh, show you my methodology and quest, and you can be the judge for yourselves. So now we're going to launch into a very special Miniature Dork Universe report. <laughs> Let's start by looking at construction vehicles. Now, a lot of the models that I'm seeing painted up have a, a similar amount of chipping on it as you would see on one of these construction type vehicles. Um, what you'll notice though is those chips are usually caused by the metal under the paint starting to rust and then the paint bubbles up and flakes off. And as you can see in this, it's, it's not even always in the high traffic areas where people are standing and, and walking and, and working. As you can see the, uh, the fender over the uh, front left tire here like, I can't imagine anybody's walking over that. I think the metal is just rusted underneath, and then over time, the paint has, has come off. Now, the difference between a construction vehicle and a military vehicle, say, in World War II, is that this construction vehicle is probably 20 years old, or they can even be older. I make log homes, and our boom truck is from the 80s, so that thing's 40 years old, you know, and, and there's paint chipping like this on it. When you're looking at World War II tanks, you're looking at, you know, a vehicle that's maybe maximum six years old, say in the case of a Russian T-26 in 1941 that was built in the 30s. I'm just using that as, a, as an example. But even, even if the paint quality isn't so great, I'm skeptical now, now that I'm looking into it and, and thinking about it, that you would see the level of chipping that you're seeing on a construction vehicle like this one. Let's look a little bit deeper and go online, simply doing a color photo search for World War II tanks. Now, some of these photos might be colorized, so it's not going to be ideal, but we'll do the best with what we got. There are some original color photos, so you go here, click on get your photos, and we'll, we want to look at some large ones, so let's get wallpaper size. Different search engines will give you different sizes. Um, here's a destroyed um, Tiger II. 
And even this, I mean, it's destroyed and there's burnt off paint and you can see some chipping in, in places, but it's, it's still not as chipped as what you would see. It looks like some of the paint might be missing off of the green falling off. Um, but yeah, I mean, this probably isn't the best example. This one is a destroyed vehicle. So let's move on to the next picture. Here's a, here's a good one is Sherman in North Africa. And so often North African vehicles are, are depicted as having all of their paint chipped off. Um, but here, as you can see, there's very little or none, you know, the, to the level that we're seeing. And especially, also keep in mind, like I'm talking about 15 millimeter models. So imagine when you scale it down, how much chipping you're actually going to see as opposed to how much is really there. Also, you keep the history in mind. These Shermans are brand new, pretty much. And for the most part, they were. The, the average lifespan of a Sherman actually wasn't considered to be that long, and even less so for something like a T-34. So even if the paint quality on a T-34 isn't great, it, I think their average lifespan was like three days on the battlefield. So it simply isn't going to have time to have that amount of chipping that we're all putting on our models. Here's an excellent picture of a Panzer IV. That looks like Operation or uh, Fall Blau. That's what I would guess. It's got some uh, of the Africa paint sprayed over the dark gray, but yeah, I can't see again that chipping that we're used to seeing on the models that we're making, <laughs> or, or even better said, the way I've been putting it on my models. Uh, yeah, this one's been colorized, so it's not going to be the best example, but again, even if it were a black and white photo, when you're looking at the edges and the places that are, you know, the big, the big culprits for being chipped, just not really seeing it in this picture. What, what I think I see in these pictures more is the paint wears out. So in the areas where there's a lot of traffic, it seems to be darker and sometimes the bare metal is showing through. But I, I really do think the chipping's caused by paint rusting, or sorry, the metal rusting under the paint. Here's a, a Jag Panther. That's, that's in a museum somewhere, I think. There's, a, there's an M3 medium tank behind it of some sort and some kind of weird, some kind of weird Sherman maybe back there with armor, but again, looking at this just sitting in the field, there might be some chipping around the fenders uh, but even even something like this sitting around, we're not seeing. Let's look at an actual damage tank. Here you can actually see some something that's a bit closer to that paint chipping, you know, especially around the impact where the the shell hit the turret. So that might have just actually crumbled the paint off the concussion from the shell, and where it's burnt, it's bare paint really right down to the metal. And you can see on the fenders some of the paint chipping, like what we're painting. But again, for the most part, compared to what, you know, what we're seeing a lot of often, you know, this may not be you, so I'm not accusing everyone, obviously. But uh, yeah, even around the hatches, around the commander's cupola, often you see these areas being chipped by modelers. but I'm not seeing it so much in the actual real deal. Let's see what's next. We got a, a couple Shermans. I think that Canadian Sherman is a bit too small for us to get an accurate look at. But this guy's big enough. It shows you the image size right there, the 1278 by whatever. But once again, you see a lot of weathering, a lot of mud and streaks and uh, the paint looks discolored really more than the, there's chipping. The, the edges are a little bit darker, so it might be worn paint down to the bare metal, like along the gun mantlet there. Um, but <coughs> in a lot of the areas where we're used to seeing that stuff, those paint chippings and models, uh, 
Yeah, I'm, again, it's not really present in an actual photo of the actual thing. It's a great picture, though. It's kind of fun looking at all these color photos. <laughs> Let's see what's next. Oh, here's another good one. These look like uh, American tanks in the Rhine campaign, maybe. The M4, A4, I think it is. Or is that a, yeah, that's that a Sherman 5 or an M4A3, I think it is. I think this one's been colorized too, so that's, that's a bit of a dick. But still, looking at it again, you know, you be the judge. Do you see those paint chips? Because <laughs> I don't. I see a lot of weathering, a lot of mud. Um, the thing is, too, that, you know, the, the, the Hollywood picture of tanks crashing through buildings and trees, I'm, I'm not sure if that was common practice, right? What you notice in all of these photos is the open spaces these tanks are in. Oh, this is one of these shitty, what is it, Reddit or something. I won't be able to open it up large. So that's a bit of a dick. But I mean, this one's the same as the other Shermans. You know, the, it's got a lot of weathering and, and mud and sort of discolored patching look on the paint, but uh, none of the paint chipping that we've been putting on our tanks with sponges and stuff, <laughs> you know. I think you should reallocate your time to, uh, you know, making the mud than, than putting those paint chips on. Well, yeah, but back to what I was saying. Look, most of these pictures, the tanks are in open ground because that's where they're ideally suited to fight, right? They're not going to be crashing through trees and stuff like in the, in the movies, ideally. Um, these guys are in the trees. This is a pretty famous picture. I like this one. But, you know, once again, look at all the edges where you might normally get your sponge out and start adding those paint chips. And again, they're not there. You see mud on the front and stains where water has made the mud wet. And uh, the paint is really, really weathered, like very dusty, um, but, but not chipped up. So yeah, back to what I was saying, tanks in open areas, I think for the most part. And also the difference between, say, a construction vehicle is the tank is much newer, especially in World War II. Like this tank here is probably no more than two years old, ideally. Um, maybe even a year old, you know. It's probably in Tunisia in 1943, and that's a later model Crusader with the six-pounder, so it's maybe two years at the most, but probably like a year old. So it hasn't been around long enough for the paint to chip. Um, but also the tank crews take much better care of their tanks than construction people do. A construction vehicle is pretty robust, and, and they're pretty... Uh, they're generally pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're reliable, right? Like our, our boom truck needs some TLC once in a while, but you push the button and it works and you try to get the job done, but you're not fighting a war in it, right? These guys are doing daily maintenance in most cases. You know, when I read about tanks and the way that they're operated, um, these guys are invested in staying alive, so they're keeping these things um, functional. And in, in the process... Uh, I think the paint is part of that function too. I've, I've read places where the Germans would paint over areas that were exposed metal. I'm sure it happened. I, I imagine uh, shots being deflected off the armor might scratch it and, and cause it to rust and chip a little faster. And it's very likely that those areas would be painted over reasonably quickly, maybe not within a week or a month, but so yeah, just going through uh, this M3 Lee, looks like it's in the States. Wow, some of these pictures are great. I should look at these <laughs> more often. You really get a feel for the, uh, um, the environments that these things are in. Uh, this guy's kind of too far away to tell, really. It, it, if it wasn't colorized, the, the colors are kind of strange. It looks very greeny and browny for a tiger unless it's a really late war picture, but it doesn't look like a really late war tiger, so who knows. But yeah, again, I didn't see a lot of paint chips on this. Let's see what's next. 
Here's a Stuart in the desert. Again, lots of dust, but we're not seeing these paint chips. Maybe they're there under the dust, I don't know. <laughs> but you shrink that down. I can't even get it to as small as what it would look like in 15 millimeter. And, you know, you know what I'm saying now. I'm not gonna keep repeating it, but we'll, we'll look at a bunch of these pictures because what I'm trying to impress is it's, it's not just me making this observation by looking at one or two pictures. We're gonna look at like 20 pictures and, and you'll see for yourself. Let's take a look at this African Corps Panzer IV, probably a Aus D. Um, yeah, what you see here is, I think this is paint. Sometimes they, this looks like an early, early Panzer IV D with engineers climbing up on the back. Um, I say engineers because that guy's got a, a flamethrower and you see some specialized engineer equipment. And only the engineers seemed to wear their helmets in the desert. Mostly the guys just wore their, uh, their uh, like their caps. Um, anyway, back to the tank. Uh, you see the paint is, I, I'm thinking it's paint. It doesn't look like mud that they used to kind of camouflage it before they got them painted. Some of the really early Panzer showed up, Panzer Gray. You can see signs of the uh, Panzer Gray underneath. And the paint is either worn off or it's just a very quick, very quick haphazard paint job. But again, if it's, if it is wearing off, it's wearing off. It's not really chipping off per se. Um, yeah. And often, often you see Africa core vehicles when people are building the models and painting them just covered in, in paint chips everywhere. Um, again, I'm not really seeing that. In this particular picture, um, we'll look at some more Africa vehicles. Well, maybe we won't. We've seen a lot of U.S. tanks and we've seen a British the, the Crusader. Like, <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> we won't beat the dead horse. Um, we'll look at a few more pictures and uh, we'll try to dig up some Russian stuff. But let's see what's coming up next. Again, more Panzer Grey. Um, that's a Panzer III M with the mufflers missing for some reason. They had that raised exhaust so they could uh, go through deeper water. These are great pictures, eh? Like, look at the buildings in the background. And uh, again, you notice they're, <laughs> they're on a road, but it's very spacious and open. You know, tanks don't always find themselves an ideal habitat for tank warfare obviously you've had head have, ah, have hedgerows and you know tanks in burma and stuff but you know where they can they try to stay in the areas where they're most effective um so how that relates to paint chipping again they're not really crashing into things and i think you know around around uh say bullet impacts or or shrapnel hits on the armor that could break the surface of the paint and it could start to rust underneath the metal and then chip off but again that's going to take some time it's not going to happen overnight um so yeah you know what i'm saying here's another good uh picture another sherman though We'll, we'll stop looking at Shermans, but <laughs> this is a good picture. And I, I don't know, I think maybe this is a legit colored picture. I, I can't tell. Um, there's some kind of crazy mud on this guy. And definitely like paint discoloration that, uh, if it is colorized, maybe that's just mud showing up. But I almost think in the future when I'm painting tanks, I'm going to just try to do like a, a patchy paint job. See another great picture of these Shermans in Germany uh, in a hilly area with some houses. Awesome. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think next we've seen lots of Panzers and I think, uh, I think we're going to need to look at some Russian tanks. Because uh, we see here, obviously, and, and I have read that the quality of the American paint was pretty good. And it seems to be the case when we look at pictures of Shermans. And uh, it looks like the Americans have a lot more color photos or 
maybe someone's just colorized a lot of these from the States. But yeah, still an awesome photo. Yeah, it's probably been colorized. Yeah. Okay. Here's now no more Germans. Let's look at some Russian stuff. They're uh, notorious for having, you know, poor quality paint and they're always modeled with rust all over them. Now here's a museum piece that's been sitting around for years and you can see some, you know, rust spots. But uh, yeah, that's not really what I would consider chipping <laughs> in the field. Let's see if we can find a picture. Here is a uh, KV-1S, what a beaut, beside a tiger. Jesus, these pictures are great. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Let's see, it's not a very big picture. It looks like it's been colorized as well. Let's see, that's, that's not too bad for size. Let's see. Ah. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. You do see a lot of weathering. Obviously, there's mud all over the front deck, like, that's been thrown on. Looks like there might be shrapnel damage, but it's hard to see that, you know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the topic of the video, we're not seeing that. It uh, doesn't look like someone took a sponge over, and definitely not the tiger. But again, that tiger would be pretty new. It's got a very clean looking paint job. Let's see, what else do we got? There's just not as much World War II, you know, just things the Germans like. Here we go, a KV-2. Um, again, it's hard for me to tell if that's been colorized or if that's a color photo. But here is a good example, though. I mean, just like our German tanks, this is cool too, a freaking British truck in German service. When you're doing Barbarossa stuff, you can put all of these uh, awesome, you know, like Morris trucks and what have you. Um, but anyway, KV, yeah, I don't see that chipping that we're used to seeing, maybe a little bit along the edges, but it looks more worn to me. You know, so the, the poor quality paint, what happens is the, the pigment in the binder comes off. And, and then it just sort of has that patchy look, but it doesn't really chip per se. It just wears down. So, you know, painting a Russian, I think next time I do Russian tanks, I'm going to load up the airbrush and just do those darker patches. You know, it's almost opposite to some of the uh, um, uh, modulation that I've been doing. I just like the way the modulation looks, but I might give that a try. It looks pretty good, that sort of patchy look. Let's see if there's anything else here. Soviet. I'm just going to stick with World War II because that's what I'm modeling. And I, I have seen pictures of modern tanks, like, like in Syria, and they do have that paint chipping. But it looks like maybe they've been around since the 70s and not <laughs> repainted much since... Uh, so who knows, but I'm, I'm dealing here with World War II because that's my thing. Yeah. Okay. Here's some more German stuff. <laughs> I said we were going to look at Russians, but Hey, this is another great photo. I think these are Panzer four D's with a uh, field modification um, storage bins at the back and again you see all of that uh, weathering and very little or no chipping maybe some worn paint I think the Panzer gray is very dark like much darker than what I've been painting I might darken her up in the future let's see there's not a lot of Soviet stuff Here's another German. This is the later war, you know, the three color camouflage with the Dunkelgelb base. Another great photo. So late in the war, you know, there's a lot of attrition with German vehicles. So I don't even think they're out in the field long enough to get all chipped up and rusted up the way they're often depicted in models. 
and that's kind of what we're seeing here. Tigers, nice. Not easy to find actual pictures, like good size ones. Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, look at this. There's a lot of paint chipping there. This looks like it's been sitting like one of those monuments you see that were put up in the Soviet era where the tanks have just been sitting on a concrete pedestal for, you know, 20 or 30 years. But I'm, I'm not so sure you would see that level of paint degradation, <laughs> you know. T-3485 isn't that old. You know, when you look at this SU-76, it's looking pretty clean. Well, not clean, it's covered in dust, but I mean, the paint job looks pretty fresh. Even though it's a black and white photo, you'd be hard pressed to see anything that looks like those, you know, sponged up paint chips. All right, I think I'm gonna call it here. Yay! We've seen enough. This video is getting to be about half an hour long and your attention span is probably waning looking through pictures. But uh, yeah, I think those pictures kind of illustrate a point. And if you disagree, just look for yourself. It's easy to do a web search and uh, see how that kind of stuff looks. And uh, you know, why am I bringing attention to this? Because it, it seems to become almost like a, you know, in the 80s, there was certain conventions to building things where it was always the wash and the dry brush and it was just done. And I think the paint chipping's kind of gone the same way and, and maybe to some extent like crazy over weather, weathering sometimes. Um, and from my point of view, it, it takes time. Like that, that stuff adds to your bench time getting these things painted and built. So I think you can cut out a lot of this stuff or maybe emphasize on something better. Or, I mean, they are just for gaming too, right? So they don't have to be like super accurate. I, you know, I've said this many times and I'll say it again. I, I usually just go for making the vehicle look nice. And if I can bring some realism to it in addition, then I'll do it. And, uh, and if I can save time, I'll do it. So, uh, you know, I guess what I'm saying with this video is you could probably save yourself some time, put the bloody sponge down, <laughs> and your tanks are going to look great without all those chipping components on it. And, uh, you know, with that being said, too, the chipping does make the tanks look really battle-worn. So, you know, if, if that's what you're going for, it doesn't really need to be 100% realistic. So, yeah. I'll just end this with a video, uh, you know, stills my walk of shame, <laughs> the chipping I've done on my stuff over the years. And uh, yeah, we'll see you for the next round of Miniature Dork Universe. If you've made it this far, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.